This is The Thing About Jellyfish by Allie Benjamin. This is Chapter 21, How to Get Things Wrong. By the time we are in sixth grade at the Eugene Field Memorial Middle School, everything is different. It's bigger than our old school, first of all. Three different elementary schools feed into Eugene Field Memorial Middle School, so there are many strangers. The building is bigger, too, and there are lots of different wings. The 6th grade wing, the 7th grade wing, the 8th grade wing, the arts wing, the psych ed wing. I get lost, too, often, and end up walking the halls with kids who are much older than I am. And there are the lockers. Last year, everyone had wooden cubbies, and everything was out in the open. Now we have cold metal lockers that can only be opened with combinations. All our things hidden from the light. The lockers fill entire hallways, entire wings, one after another. At night, I dream I'm walking down those hallways. In my dreams, they go on forever. In middle school, kids cast sideways glances at one another, like they're suspicious of one another. I can see clumps of kids forming. Pretty Aubrey with dark hair has started sitting with a pretty girl named Molly, who has blonde hair, and they surround themselves with other pretty girls, Anna and Jenna and some others, some of whom I know from elementary school, and some of whom I don't. I don't like walking past them when they cluster around lockers together. Their hair is so flat, like they know exactly what product to use, and that makes me conscious of my own wild tangles of hair. It makes me feel like a separate piece, a species altogether. For the first part of the year, lunchtime at least, is the same as last year, with you and me sitting together and sharing snacks and everything being easy. But after a while, things change. I don't notice the change at first. Each day I sit down at our regular table and eat my cheese sandwich and wait while you buy your milk. I begin to wait longer than usual. That's because instead of coming straight to the table, you linger. You talk to people, people I don't even know, and you take your time. You aren't just talking either, you're also standing with a hip stuck out, which makes me wonder if you're waiting for Dylan to walk by. Each day day it seems like you linger a little longer. Then one day you leave the lunch line, and I think you are walking toward our table, but you don't. Instead, you sit down at a table with other girls, and not just any girls. You sit with Aubrey and Molly and Jenna and Anna. They smile at you like it's totally, totally normal that you would sit there. I can see your mouths moving as you talk. I meet your eyes from across the room. I frown at you, lift my hands, and say, What are you doing? At first you look away. I don't stop staring at you. After a while, you look back at me. You smile and wave me over. As if I might want to sit with that group. I scowl. I look down at my sandwich. A lunch monitor walks past and says to me, Careful, your face will freeze in that position. That night, I tell my mom I want to start buying milk and a snack in the cafeteria. That way, I can stand right next to you as you buy your milk. The next day, as soon as we have both paid the lunch lady, I say, Come on and I pulled you to our, toward our regular table. You come with me. You sit with me. And it's just the two of us like it should be. But you're very quiet for the rest of lunch. And after you eat, you crumple your wrapper and stand without even looking at me. A few days later, you say, I'm going to eat with those guys today. And you gesture with your head to Aubrey's table as if nothing at all. Your voice is the kind of voice my mother sometimes calls snippy. After a few seconds, you add, You should come too. They're nice. And your voice is a little kinder then. Like maybe you feel a little bit sorry. I follow you to the table. You sit down next to Jenna. There's not much, much space, not, not much space, but I squeeze another chair between you anyway. Everyone says hi, but then barely anyone says anything to me for the rest of lunch. Before lunch ends, the girls bring out little round mirrors. They share blush and eye shadow in various shades of green and blue and gray. They talk about face shapes and skin tone, and they point out a bunch of kids who are wearing the wrong colors for their complexions. Somehow, you know what they are talking about. You know enough to agree that Dory Perkins is olivey and oval, but that Emma Strank has cool skin tones and a heart-shaped face. You turn to me and say softly, Your face is kind of heart-shaped too, Susie. And I cannot, cannot help it. I make a face at you. You turn away quickly. The next day you sit with them again. I follow because best friends always eat together. 
Molly is saying that during her hip hop, hop dance class, she wraps her legs and stomach in plastic wrap. This way, she sweats more. I think about the advice my mother has always given me, that it's important to ask other people lots of questions. So I ask, why would you want to sweat more anyway? Molly doesn't answer, but Aubrey leans over to me and says very slowly, as if it's obvious, it makes her pants fit better. I try again. Actually, humans have the most sweat glands on the bottom of of their feet, I say. This is because it's true, and also because it's joining the conversation. Molly looks at Molly looks at me and raises a single eyebrow. That's how I know I said the wrong thing. I try again. Did you know that sweat is sterile when it comes out of your body? Molly presses her lips together and her nostrils flare ever so slightly. It's kind of like pee, I say. Everybody thinks pee is so gross, but it's actually totally clean. The table gets very, very still. Some people even drink their pee, you know. I notice that Jenna's hand which has been about to put a piece of popcorn in her mouth, is frozen in midair. Jenna looks at Molly. Aubrey looks at you. Then at Anna. Nobody looks at me. I say, most of the time when people drink their pee, it's because they have to, like because they're trapped under rubble or something. But some people do it because they think it's good for them. Jenna shakes her head, puts the piece of popcorn down. Molly closes her eyes and presses her lips together. It looks like she's trying not to laugh. Actually, it looks like everyone is trying not to laugh. Even you. Oh, and you know who else drinks their pee? I cannot seem to stop the words coming from my, um, words from coming, even though I realize, even as they're coming out, that they're the wrong ones. Butterflies. They get salts and minerals that way, and a lot of animals use pee to communicate with each other. I mean, I know that sounds pretty gross, but then my voice trails off. I bite my lip. I take a deep, few deep breaths, try to ignore the silence. I reach into my bag and pull out my fruit roll-up. It's strawberry flavored. I offer it to you. Want this? You shake your head. You do not look at me. I say, you sure? It's strawberry flavored. You gaze past me. Your eyes focus on something just above my right shoulder. I say, get it? The other girls meet one another's eyes again. Strawberry for strawberry girl, I offer again, waving the straw the fruit roll up slightly. Your eyes snap right back at me then. They narrow. Huh? asks Aubrey. Nothing, you snap. It's nothing. Just something stupid we did when we were really, really little. You shoot me a fiery look. You shoot me a fierce look. Some people don't know when it's time to grow up, that's all, you add. You stand, and just like that, the other girls stand, too. Just before you stride away, you lean down to me so close I can feel your heart. You can feel your heat. Your face is flushed red. Your eyes are blazing. Why do you have to be so weird, Susie? You hiss. I have never seen you this angry, and I am confused, because all I did was offer you my fruit roll-up, which is something friends do. You're just so weird, you say. You turn again, you turn away from me, and storm out of the cafeteria. The other girls follow. And I'm so amazed. Amazed as I was the first day I met you, when I saw you unexpectedly swim underwater, back when I thought you were like me, and you couldn't swim. Those girls are following you. You are the girl who was once afraid to read aloud in class, afraid to spend the night away from your mother, and now these girls are following you. No one even turns around to glance back at me.